Growing up, Grady was a very typical boy. Little seven-year-old punk, little wise guy. Very competitive to the point where it's not fun. He would be the one sitting with the kids at lunch that nobody was sitting with. He hates to lose, but he'll try. He tries hard. He's inappropriately funny. He's just a goofball. And he's a, he's a good boy. <laughs> Can you talk about girlfriends? No? <laughs> um, Miss Pride. Our life was just, you know, mom, dad, brother, sister, perfect little family. And we, we were happy. And this specific summer, we started noticing that he couldn't hear us very well. We went out to dinner and the restaurant was fairly empty. And I looked at him, I said, Grady, could you please finish your dinner? And he looked at me and went, I can't, it's too loud in here, I can't hear you. It started getting progressively worse over a couple weeks. Um, I would ask him to put his shoes on and he would say there's no cow in the house or something to that effect. And they did a hearing test on him and it was perfect. Asked her if it could be neurological. So Grady went to a specialist and they put some pictures in front of him. Very simple things a child his age could answer. Point to the cat, he pointed at a house. Point to the football, he pointed at the cat. And a few hours later they decided to scan him and unfortunately that's when they found the lesion on his brain that they believed was adrenal leukodystrophy. What is ALD? I open it up, the first link says rapid progression to a vegetable state, no real treatment, a rapid death or something like that. There is no cure for adrenal leukodystrophy. The life that we had prior to this was over. Everything we were reading was that we were going to lose him. No more ALD talk, okay? You're doing so good, okay? I know it's been a lot, okay? But you're doing great. I felt inconsolable. Everything was just kind of, just hit me at once and it was real. Um, but then when you know it, he pops up and he sees me crying. He starts telling me jokes. He starts fooling around. It was helping me emotionally when I felt it should have been the other way around. But I think that speaks to who he is. What are we gonna do to save him? And. We learned that a bone marrow transplant was the best option for him. It is believed to halt the disease so it won't get any worse. It stops the progression. Unfortunately, there's no going back of whatever damage has been done and whatever loss there is. So we went ahead and um, started the process. And within a couple weeks, we found that we had this amazing 10 out of 10 bone marrow match in our angel, Jessica. No, no, I would never think that I would save a life. There's nothing in my past that happened that made me want to donate or anything. It's just that I could help somebody. I could potentially help somebody to no detriment of myself. And why wouldn't I do that? You're supposed to be able to help your kids. You're supposed to protect them and save them. And I couldn't do anything. But this stranger, a complete stranger, has nothing to do with our family, was a perfect match. And it's just wild to think there's someone out there like that. After I registered, didn't hear back from anybody else at any point until about four years later when I got a call. Um, totally forgot about it that I ever registered and they, out of the blue, called me, told me that this was um, DKMS and that I was a match for a little boy. I was like, wait, what? And then I instantly went to searching and seeing and making sure that the facts they gave me were correct, as in, was this a legitimate organization? Um, was that date actually the date that I registered on? Was this somebody trying to just spam me for whatever reason? They told me I could have the day to think about it and they would call me again in the next day. And I just went, read through the information they sent me and then instantly just emailed them back and said, there's no need to call, I am more than willing to do this. Jessica gave us the second chance to live our life with our son and to save him so that we could go on living and loving and having fun and being a family whole without a missing piece. They were very blessed and very lucky that someone like her exists and very, very thankful for her.
where he's relearning the English language the way he hears it now. It's a little muffled, we think. It's hard for him to explain to us, um, but he's really a miracle outcome for everything, and we're really proud of him. Jessica, I would want to say it too. Thank you for making my dreams come true and saving my life and everything. Thank you.